Hello, hello again. Uh, welcome. We are back with uh, with the Sitco Green Maze Production Journey Challenge. Uh, if you joined us in our last segment, we were talking about how Mrs. Mwamba here challenged Sitco to say, can you come and show me and prove to me that you can actually get 150,000 kwacha from one hectare of green maize here in Zambia. And we, we said, okay, we are up for it because we have the superior genetics that will deliver that and then we couple our genetics with the best agronomic practices. I am here joined by my colleague, my colleague Denson uh, Siame from Sitco. He is a fellow agronomist as I am. And we are here again with Mrs. Mwamba, who is hosting us right on our farm in a field where, we, as you can see, we've already started the journey. Denson, will you say good morning to... Uh, good wow. morning, good afternoon viewers, good afternoon farmers. Wherever, whatever time of day they are watching us. Uh, watching us. Some of them will tune in in the night. <laughs> yes. Mrs. Mwamba. Good morning and uh, welcome again, Sidco. I'm always excited uh, to see what we're going to do next. Your, your excitement drives us, Mrs. Mwamba. Thank it's, you. It's a willingness or, uh, of the farmers to adopt this thing that actually makes us achieve. And so today we are zeroing in on Having planted, having planted, we planted the first portion. Remember, uh, we, one of the things we said in, in order to manage risks, and the two risks that are at hand for us are the cold, because we are planting in the winter time in Zambia, uh, so we need to manage that. And then the second risk is it's a green millies crop that has got a window of sale of between seven days to about 10 days. So how can we sell a hectare? Uh, without losing, without losing uh, that window, that particular window. And we said we will stagger the plantings as one of the uh, um, main ways of managing the, the, the product that is going to market, the quantities of product that is going to market in that window. Uh, and, and, and so our plantings has been staggered into four different uh, dates of planting. This opens the fields to four one weeks and gives us a month of selling. So we stretch the week to a month. That way, we are assured we are selling everything or almost everything. And we then can attain the 150,000 kwacha that we are targeting here. The second reason is because we started planting in the cold. If we can plant smaller portions per time, we can manage uh, frostbite better in a small portion than as opposed to if it was a very big portion so if our coldest snap will be in just a week then we know our concentration will be more around a portion that was planted uh, and leading into that particular cold snap we actually observed what's your observation it, it, this this first planting really delayed uh, to come out and to eventually progress to the stage where it is but uh, the the observations mrs mwamba the the observations of the impact of the cold temperatures on the growth rate of of this particular crop uh what 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 have you seen with regards this first planting yeah so the first uh the second week of june was pretty cold i think we were just getting into the cold and it was cold and we planted on the 6th of june as you remember and during that week uh we came back because we were very eager to see whether there was any germination or not. It did take definitely over a week and a half and towards the, the, the end of the second week. That's when we actually started seeing the plants coming up and everything. We were very comfortable, by the way, because we knew Sitco was coming to sort out the problems that, <laughs> that we were experiencing at that time. But then we understood that the cold does actually stunt growth uh, you know, of the crops and everything. So we were not panicking too much. But uh, with interaction with you guys, we obviously learned on how to manage, uh, you know, the cold and how to manage the frost as well. So that's how we were able to survive to get to, to the level that we're at now. So we're very grateful for that. Wonderful. Also to mention that at the time of planting, we came and further on farm treated the seed with some micronutrition product that's got zinc, which is found to be very good to help the young plants manage not only disease, but also frost uh, in, in, in that particular order. So if you will ever plant a seed core maize or any other maize uh, in the, in the uh, or any other seed core uh, seeds 
in any in in the code please know that it will not come out uh in the five to seven days as in the summer season it will delay a bit because of uh, uh cold temperatures so and then zeroing in to today denser we are here to do some crop protection weed management we we did mention or did we mention or out of the observation that there's been a lot of may streak virus this year um, and we we want to also uh, talk about how to go about protecting uh, the system of the crop in that regard yes indeed adrian i think this season we've had uh, incidences of uh, uh, may streak virus in a lot of uh, location and uh, mrs malemeka's field is probably not an exception so uh, thinking forward as uh, seed core agronomists we've come to her with a solution which is uh, the use of uh, Temicide. This is a product that contains imidacloprid. Imidacloprid uh, is an, insect, an insecticide that is uh, systemic and so can easily be taken up by the plant and takes care of uh, both the soil as well as the above ground uh, pests. These are both sucking and uh, chewing insects. Examples would be leaf hoppers, which are the, the uh, immediate transmitters of metric virus in the field. Wonderful. Another thing we must be doing today at Denson is um, uh, weed management. I'm sure everyone that's watching us today and seeing the field in our background will say weed management for what? So Mrs. Mwamba, as well as other farmers out there, it's very important that uh, you are able to read the, the label and understand almost every detail that is on the label. On top of the, the blue band that I mentioned on this particular product, you need to know what the trade name is. You need also to understand what the active ingredient is. Uh, the product label also tell you the rates the, that the, the manufacturer has actually recommended. For this particular uh, product, the active ingredient is imidacloprid. It also tells you the rate. It, for this one, it's 305 grams per liter of the active ingredient. That will tell you its efficacy in use as you are applying it in your, in your field. Uh, uh, apart from that, of course, we, we are about to, to use this product as a drench. The recommended rate by the manufacturer for it as a spray is uh, 50 mils per 20 liter knapsack. But because we are using it as a drench, we are only going to apply 100 mils to the 20 liter knapsack because we're applying it into the soil. And, and as, as such, we expect it to be taken up through the roots. And as you are irrigating with your drip irrigation, some of the product that we've drenched in the, in the drip lines will be taken down of the root zone with the uh, irrigation as you, uh, as you irrigate. That's why we're upping it from 50 mils to 100 mils. Yes. Wonderful. So the, the next stage now is to help this crop grow without competition from the weeds. Yes. Because we are really looking for that cob that we will sell on the market. <laughs> Otherwise, yes. again, we will not achieve the price per cob to lead us to the 150,000 kwacha. Yes. So today, we, we, are, we are also thinking there are many ways you can manage the weeds in this field. You could choose to get the workers come in with hoys, um, but, but because we have already applied the best of fertilizers, uh, later on we will be putting our first top dress. The fact that Four workers or one worker is taking so long yeah. to weed one area. The weeds that are in another place are actually uh, feeding on the fertilizers. Mm. So if it takes a week, then they will have fed so much yeah. on your hard end fertilizer money, yeah. uh, which then you are sure you are having directed to your plant that must ultimately give you the output that's feeding into the big picture. 150,000 uh, kwacha. So today we are think we, we then we, we then say the most effective way will be chemical weeds control. And we talked about product selection. It's a friendly one. Just keep yourself safe. Uh, uh, make sure the product will not affect the next uh, crop that we are planting. And we know three months down the line, we can come and plant a cabbage crop in here. We can come and plant any other uh, crop by the time we harvest. So, but then how to follow the uh, application instructions. Yeah. So how to apply safely. Um, my colleague Denson mentioned uh, touch safety guidelines. 
what you have to put on but then um, the rates of application uh, now uh, for this usually they will guide the label will guide and say it's one to 1.2 liters per hectare mm -hmm. one to 1.2 liters per hectare depending on the type of the soil you have the more heavier clays you will increase the rate the the the, the much lighter ones the sandier soils mm -hmm. the rate will remain really at one liters per hectare so the, if, if it's one liters per hectare you will find your sprays are requiring about a hundred uh, this is this is rather a residual herbicide it will require about 200 liters okay. so 200 liters if you have uh, a 20 liter sprayer then it means 10 sprayers okay. in a hectare yeah. so 10 sprayers in a hectare means this one liter we will go at uh, about 100 mils okay i just want to ask um, uh -huh. a question yes so if we have like a 210 liter drum can we pre-mix it if you have a 210 liters drum you can pre-mix it if you have a thousand liters drum you can pre-mix it okay. at commercial level where they have to spray a thousand three thousand hectares you'll find they have up to three thousand liter uh, uh containers that are behind those uh, uh tractors that they spray with okay. so they mix the whole of the three thousand liters and and just go on running at our small scale we are talking one liter bottles yeah when, when you have grown the next time we're coming to your farm we'll be talking 20 liter containers <laughs> yeah, that have course. to be decanted <laughs> into the yes. into the big yes. containers so that is the rate that we are going with today we are going with 100 mils uh we could push it to 120 uh per uh, uh knapsack sprayer and the the, the 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 biggest thing here the biggest thing is we want to drive the volume to the site of activity okay so as as the as the guy will be coming spraying the weeds that are up already will be touched by the spray and they will take it in and they die but the weeds that are in the form of seed uh -huh. they will the, the the product will only reach by irrigation Okay. So we still increase the rate of our um, the rate of our water in the knapsack mm -hmm. per, per uh, volume of uh, product just to drive the the product it's downwards good. into the soil so that it's actively um, achieving what we want uh, to have. And to do that, particularly for these residual residual uh, herbicides we are advised to use flat fan nozzles. Mm -hmm. The flat fan nozzles have got some of the highest distribution of product, uh, of, about, of water rather, uh, product and water mix of over one liter per minute mm -hmm. at, at, at uh, well calibrated uh, uh, pump pressure. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are doing today. And we are now onto the mixes and then we will come and spray, sure. Mrs. Mwamba, uh, the journey so far and, and looking forward. Yeah, I think um, I am carrying a mix of excitement uh -huh. and uh, also overwhelm. Um, the reason I, I feel like I'm not so overwhelmed is because I have grown maize before. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. The only difference is obviously the practices were much more ancient mm -hmm. than what we're doing now, mm -hmm. and uh, being able to latch onto the the, the products and everything, I am able to take that. But I know it would be difficult for somebody who's just um, beginning. Yeah. So it's always important to take note of everything mm -hmm. and have it in a notebook because it helps with you going back. When you actually have information, anything that is coming up, it gives you a lot more comfort. That's true. You know, because you know you have somewhere you can go to. And uh, the Sidco app, uh -huh. it's amazing. Wonderful. I signed on to it and uh -huh. I put in the crop and uh -huh. it reminds me of when what is supposed to be, you know, to be added in, right. what, uh, what possible diseases are there and everything. So the Sidco app is very, very important and it's very, very informative. Thank so you. for me, I am so excited to use the app as well. Wonderful. But also to, you know, to gain information from you. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so far, if you look at the, the first part that we started, yes. when you count the crops, they should come around, I think they're 3,800? Yes. 
Yes. I will tell you that that 3,800 was a whole field for me before. Ah. Because of ah. the planting the spaces gappings, and the yes, gappings and yes. everything. So yes. now I'm already seeing something that I was doing three times, I will be doing once. Wonderful. So that, it's, it's really that's, exciting. And uh, That's excellent feedback. Just, just on that plant population, <laughs> uh, I think I highlighted in the earlier video that um, crop establishment, which is really from land prep, yeah. all the way to where the where the this particular crop is we yes. say it's established yes. this is this is uh the journey up to here is like 50 60 percent yeah uh it will tell us whether we'll really attain uh, uh the 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 output that we are aiming at mm -hmm. and plant population if if the one plant that's supposed to be contributing to that ultimate goal is missing yeah. then we must count uh, that one plant's contribution out of the game yes. and we must be reducing our expectations. Yeah. So to hear you say um, we, we are standing right here and then when you compare with what your practices have been before, I want to also come and tell you that that is one of the major reasons why smallholder farmers are having two tons per hectare yes. and commercial farmers are having 10 tons per hectare. Yeah. Plant population is very, very critical. And your feedback on the agronomy app excellent for us because how many uh, times have we come since we started uh, i mean you've been here a lot of times of course but not as many as the number of days that uh, we've had the crop in you know yes absolutely. truth be told we won't manage to be here every day yeah. but the the our sydney app is with you All 24 7 365 you can just turn into there and see what am i doing right what am i doing wrong what am i supposed to be doing at this moment yes, yes. and it's loaded with all all those uh, directives and it really will improve the output for the, the, the best part for me is the notifications excellent I, I mean, excellent it's like you've gotten an sms from uh, sitco to say uh, hey can you, you can you come and do nutrients into your crop exactly, so for, exactly. for us to be here uh -huh. i actually got a notification yesterday uh -huh. to say that we now need to put in the next phase of the micronutrients and also the spraying and everything. Wonderful, so it's wonderful. not uh, it's not just you. Uh -huh. I think I was reminded as well before. <laughs> wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. That's beautiful. That's very encouraging feedback. And we are uh, we want to congratulate you already for sticking to the journeys. I want to highlight for the sake of the listeners that a farmer like her who's decided to turn one field into three fields practically because the pl planting dates are more than three actually. This yeah. is going to be like one two three four. and four so it's four fields in one then you you have th four different planting dates and so your no notifications will actually be treating as if your one field is four fields so your practices are going to really be following the four calendars uh in here so do not be tired of plugging again your next planting dates on the same uh, 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 details of the seed that you bought from us if you've decided to stagger your plantings just so that each one of your plantings is receiving timeless attention as, as, as guided by the uh, Sydney app and as guided by the, Sid the Sidco agronomist uh, if we will have reached you but if we will not have reached you physically that's a way that we are reaching you virtually and I'm very glad Mrs Mamba uh, for that, 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 that the Sydney app is working for you. Yes, it is. Wonderful. Wonderful.